Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and today I'll be covering 22 Pokemon moves that you probably haven't heard of. I created this list by going through every single one of the 915 Pokemon moves and writing down any that I, someone who does Pokemon, as his job, had not heard of. Or at least if I had, I'd encountered the move so few times that I wasn't really sure what it even did. First up is Aromatic Mist. This fairy type status move was introduced in Gen 6 and it raises the special defense of an ally Pokemon by one stage. There are three reasons why I had never encountered this move. The first is that it only works in double battles. Unless you compete in the official VGC format or at least watch a lot of it, you're likely doing far more single battles than double battles. Additionally, it sucks. Using an entire turn to boost another Pokemon's stat by only one stage, when you could use a different move to boost both Pokemon by two stages like Tailwind, is simply not a good idea. So even if I did do a lot of double battles, no one would be using this move. Finally, it's not on very many Pokemon. In Gen 6, it was Aromatisse's signature move, and I don't know about you, but I haven't been using Aromatisse at any point in time. After that, it was expanded to other solid Pokemon, but those Pokemon have much better moves you could be using instead. Next is Axe Kick, one of the new moves introduced in Scarlet and Violet. It's a 120 base power and 90% accurate fighting type attack that has a 30% chance to confuse the target. However, if it fails to do damage due to missing or protect or an immunity, the user takes half of its max HP and crash damage. It's basically high jump kick, but slightly less powerful in exchange for the confusion chance. Now, because Axe Kick is a brand new move, I had definitely seen it at least briefly when looking at a list of all the new moves added in Scarlet and Violet. But unlike Aqua Cutter, Salt Cure, or Order Up, I haven't encountered it at all since looking at that list. That's partially because unlike most of the new moves like Make It Rain, Torch Song, or Collision Course, it's not a signature move for a prominent new Pokemon. And in fact, it's not a signature move at all. The only Pokemon to learn it are Metacham, Hisuian Lilligant, and Lowkix, an old Pokemon, a form not in the game until recently, and a new Pokemon whose type doesn't even match the move. It's a weird group that are not widely used. One of them is transfer only, and the other two are not particularly good. If you use Lowkix or Metacham on your team, then there's a solid chance you've encountered the move. But if you're like me and did not, then you may never have seen this move used a single time. By the way, for just a moment, I'd like to quickly ask you to subscribe. It's a great way to support the channel. So if you enjoy the content that I make here and wanna see more, subscribing is the best thing to do. The next move on the list is actually a group of moves, but since they're all effectively in the same category, I'm lumping them into just one entry. I was going through the list of moves alphabetically when I saw Bouncy Bubble. I didn't recognize it and clicked on it to find that it's one of the signature moves of the partner Eevee in Let's Go Eevee. That made me remember that there's several moves in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that are not in any other game because they're exclusive to the partner Pokemon. That means if you haven't played those games, you have never encountered those moves. And even if you did, you might have missed them since they're only taught by a few specific tutors in the Pokemon centers that you don't have to talk to. The partner Pikachu moves are Zippy Zap, Splishy Splash. Yes, most of them are some of the most childish Pokemon move names you will have ever heard. Floaty Fall and Pika Papow. I've played the Let's Go games, both of them, and I have never used Pika Papow. Apparently it's a secret fifth move you can use if your Pikachu wiggles the Joy-Con on screen and its power is based on friendship. I, I don't know. I've never been able to do Pokemon battles with a fifth move, except Z moves. So I've, I've, I've never done it. Didn't know that was a thing. Then partner Eevee gets uh, a lot. Uh, it's like one per evolution plus a couple extras. Bouncy Bubble, Buzzy Buzz, Sizzly Slide, Glitzy Glow, Baddy Bad, Sappy Seed, Freezy Frost, Sparkly Swirl, and VV Volley. Now, some of you keen observers may have noted that Baddy Bad comes before Bouncy Bubble alphabetically, and I said I was skimming the list in alphabetical order. The reason I skipped over it is because I was more familiar with it. Since when Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were coming out, and I learned there was going to be an attack called Baddy Bad, the funniest and dumbest name for an actually good attack that they could possibly come up with, I decided to sell a shirt with Baddy Bad to the bone on it, and almost no one bought it. Which further reinforces that even when Let's Go was a brand spanking new game, that no one had heard of these moves. Or it just, it's a, it might just be a bad shirt. 
Uh, which, fair, I, I don't know why I thought anyone would want to wear this shade of poop brown. Next up is Celebrate, and this move is very difficult to encounter because it's an event exclusive move. Meaning the only way to get a Pokemon that knows it is to get a Pokemon from an event that already knows it. Additionally, based on my research, the only event Pokemon that can know it are from in-person events, mainly Pokemon Center birthdays, only in Japan, or the World Championships. So some of you may have a Pokemon with this move if you went to Worlds at some point, but most of the people watching, myself included, have never had a Pokemon that knows Celebrate. As for what this elusive move does, literally nothing. The description just says, the Pokemon congratulates you on your special day. Um, okay, kind of dumb, but also I guess if you're gonna have a move locked behind in-person events, then it makes sense to not make it any good. Oh, by the way, speaking of celebrate, we should all be celebrating because MNGTVMerch.com has a new drop. The headliner is the plushie for the cave form of my mascot, Mighty. It has the power of super senses. That's why he's got bat ears and his night vision goggles glow in the dark. There's also Mighty Pattern socks. They're very stretchy and very comfortable. Head to MNGTVMerch.com, linked in the description below to pick these up because if you don't quickly enough, they will sell out. Next is Chili Reception. This ice type status move creates the snow weather, then switches out, like using U-turn or Volt Switch. Also, before using it, a message will display that says, Pokemon name is preparing to tell a chillingly bad joke. Um, what? This move is like Axe Kick in regards to situation, not effect, meaning it's a brand new move in Scarlet and Violet, but it's neither widespread nor particularly good. In fact, it is a signature move, but for an old Pokemon. Only the two Slowking forms can learn it and only by remembering it, meaning you're super unlikely to encounter it by accident. What's even stranger is that snow is a weather condition that does not benefit Slowking. Snow just boosts the defense of ice types and Slowking is not an ice type unless you terastalize into it. The only situation where it makes sense to me is when you have a Slowking on the field and want to pivot specifically to an ice type Pokemon, but that's really specific. I just don't understand why they would make this super obscure new move only for an old Pokemon that isn't even good. Like, was the creation of it just a joke? A bad joke of telling a bad joke? Next is comeuppance. This dark type move deals 1.5 times the damage last done to them, regardless of whether it was physical or special. However, it does not have lower priority, so if the user is faster than the target, it will fail. Again, another weird and not very good new move added in Scarlet and Violet. It's only learned by Houndour, Houndoom, Honchkrow, and Mabostef, plus Hisui and Zorua by breeding. So if you used one of the four Pokemon that learn it by level up, then you may have encountered it. I did not though. And even if I did, I would have seen it, read its description, been like, that's bad, decided not to learn it, and then forgot about the move completely. Next is Corrosive Gas. This poison type move removes the target's held item for the remainder of the battle, like knockoff, but without doing damage. It's one of the Isle of Armor tutor moves, but it was one that I completely forgot about since unlike Grassy Glide or Rising Voltage, it's really bad. Knockoff does the exact same thing, but can do some serious damage at the same time. Corrosive Gas is not only worse, but it's not even available anymore. Unlike other Isle of Armor moves like Flip Turn or Expanding Force that were given to at least one Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, no Pokemon can learn it outside of the Isle of Armor, meaning it requires Transfer or Metronome to even be able to see it. Next up is Crafty Shield, and I'll admit, I have heard of this move before, but that is only because I've discussed it before. I made this same video concept four years ago, back when Let's Go was the most recent game, and Crafty Shield was in that video. While some of the moves from that video did not carry over to this one since they became more widespread, like Fire Lash, for example, Crafty Shield is one of the moves that has become less accessible. In fact, it can't even be used anymore. Starting in Gen 8, they started making some Pokemon moves just not work anymore, and Crafty Shield is one of them. It's a fairy type status move that behaves like Protect. It goes first, fails if used repeatedly, and so on. However, in exchange for protecting both the user and its allies, even in triple battles, it only stops status moves like Thunder Wave or Sand Attack. 
It's only learned by Klefki, Magirna, Chimeko, and the Yamask lines, so it's hard to even find Pokemon that can learn it. Also, as I mentioned, you haven't been able to use it since Sword and Shield. Not in Legends Arceus, not in BDSP, not in Scarlet and Violet. So it's a mediocre at best move that has been banished into obscurity. Next is Gear Up. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see moves that have the word gear in them, I immediately think, oh, a move that the Kling Klang line can learn. I knew about their signature attack, Gear Grind, and I also think of the boosting move, Shift Gear, which was a signature move for the line, then spread to more Pokemon, like Toxtricity or Revavroom. However, when I saw Gear Up, I was confused because I knew about Gear Grind and Shift Gear, but what is Gear Up? How had I not heard of this other gear move? Well, it turns out there's a lot of reasons. Gear Up was introduced in generation seven, two generations after Gear Grind and Shift Gear, and only given to Kling Klang and Magirna. Additionally, it stinks. It's a steel type status move that boosts the attack and special attack of all allied Pokemon, including the user, that have the ability plus or minus. So it's an almost signature move added two generations after the main gear Pokemon, and it's extremely specific to one strategy of using Pokemon with the abilities plus or minus, which might I add is a very bad strategy. All plus or minus Pokemon are steel or electric type, which means if your opponent has a single ground type, you're screwed. Additionally, it boosts attack and special attack, which is immediately bad since most Pokemon only care about one, but also the plus and minus abilities only boost special attack. It's yet another weird, super situational and just bad move given to very few Pokemon that also can't be used anymore. So you're never gonna see it. I'll discuss the next two moves together because they're both very similar and also they're right next to each other alphabetically. Those being happy hour and hold hands. And like Celebrate, these are event exclusive moves. But of the two, you're much more likely to have encountered Happy Hour. Happy Hour is a status move that doubles the prize money you receive after a battle, and that's it. Generation 8 did not have a single event distribution of a Pokemon that knew Happy Hour, so we hadn't seen it in a while. But then the Hisuian Zoroark you can get by purchasing the Scarlet and Violet DLC early does know the move. So a chunk of you have seen the move, but if you haven't already bought the DLC, then it's very unlikely you've seen it. Hold Hands is significantly more obscure though. The only time it was distributed to English language games was almost a decade ago in 2014 for the GTS fancy pattern Vivian, a Vivian pattern that has become the native pattern in Paldea. Unless you traded for one of the Japanese event Pokemon, that Vivian is the only way to get this move. However, even if you did get it, like me, it may not even know it anymore. Home now resets a Pokemon's moveset when being moved to a new game. So while my GTS Vivian still knows hold hands, if I try to move it to my Scarlet, it loses the move. That means even though it technically knows hold hands, I have no way of using it since Scarlet and Violet are the only Switch games Vivian can go to. I would bet that if any of you have heard of it before, it's because you saw my original video on this topic where I talk about the move and even feature it in the thumbnail. Like, if you've encountered it anywhere else besides my video, I would be very impressed. Oh, also, Hold Hands does literally nothing in battle aside from play a little animation. Super weird move, and also super dead. Next is Ion Deluge. This is another one that I talked about in my original video that is still super obscure. Ion Deluge is an electric type status move introduced in Gen 6. It has a priority of plus one, like Quick Attack, and makes it so every normal type move used for the rest of that turn becomes electric type. Okay. So, like so many other moves in this video, it is wildly situational. The only time it seems to make sense is when the user has an electric immune ability and they're fighting a normal type Pokemon. That requires super specific setup though, so it's never gonna happen. And I think Game Freak realized this. Ion Deluge hasn't been usable since Gen 7. The next move is Lunar Blessing, a psychic type move that in Scarlet and Violet restores the users and its allies HP by 25% and heals status conditions. To me, that seems like a decently useful move in double battles especially, so I was kind of surprised that I hadn't heard of it. But then I realized the reason I hadn't is because it's a signature move that can only be learned by Cresselia, but also it was introduced in Legends Arceus. 
Akus. In that game, the only game where I've had a Cresselia that could no Lunar Blessing, I caught Cresselia for the Pokedex and then just tossed it in the box. Excuse me, the pasture. And then never looked at it again. That means the only time I saw that move was maybe when I was fighting Cresselia trying to catch it, which is a big maybe. Next is Magnetic Flux, which like Ion Deluge is another obscure electric status move introduced in Gen 6 that I talked about in the last video. It functions very similarly to Gear Up, but instead of boosting the attack stats of all allies with the plus or minus abilities, it boosts their physical and special defense. Once again, I think it stinks out loud, but unlike Ion Deluge and Gear Up, it's still in the game. You can use it in Scarlet and Violet. They even gave it to the new Pokemon Sandy Shocks at level 91? What? Why? It doesn't even have plus or minus. Who, who is using this move? Next is Mortal Spin, a pretty gnarly move name. Also, I should say up front that if you used a Glamora on your team in your playthrough of Scarlet or Violet, then there's a significantly higher chance that you're familiar with this move. It's its signature move that it learns when it evolves from Glimmet. This poison type physical attack is 30 base power that hits all foes, clears all hazards or bindings like spikes or fire spin, and poisons all targets. It seems pretty cool, but it's weird that it's a physical move. Glamora's special attack is 75 points higher than its physical attack. Additionally, Gita's Glamora, the only trainer-owned Glamora you're guaranteed to fight, doesn't even know the move. So if you used Glamora, you might have seen the move for some amount of time. But if you're like me and did not use Glamora, then you're really only gonna encounter the move in the Smog on Singles competitive scene, since Glamora is a solid OU Pokemon there. But I don't do competitive battling, so I've never heard of this move. Next is Quash, another move from the previous video that is still really obscure. This dark type status move added in Gen 5 simply makes the target move last in the move order. Immediately the move is useless in single battles. While it can be used, if you go first and use it, the enemy Pokemon was gonna go second anyways. Then if you don't go first, then the move fails. In doubles, it can have some use, especially when given priority via a Pokemon with Prankster like Sableye or Murkrow, but even then it's tough to see it being super helpful. To me, it's a really situational move that's only gonna get use in the doubles competitive scene, and even then, not very often, and you're definitely not encountering it in a playthrough, which makes it extra odd that it was a TM for three consecutive generations, which is probably the only time you've seen it. Next is Rototiller, which has nothing to do with Rotom. This ground type status move was introduced in generation six, and it boosts the attack and special attack of all grass type Pokemon on the field that are not floating or flying. <sighs> Yet another stupidly situational move. Why use an entire move slot to only boost your grass type allies, but maybe enemy Pokemon too? And also, all moves that boost attack and special attack at the same time are not very good. The vast majority of Pokemon are only using one or the other. While learned by several Pokemon, it was clear that no one ever used Rototiller, so Game Freak removed it in Gen 8, thus making it impossible to encounter since then. Making this video might be the first time that I've ever heard of it. If I had heard of it before, it was in one ear and out the other. Next up is Spotlight, which I had never heard of in my life before making this video. And I know why, it is hilariously terrible. And it's not like splash or hold hands where it just doesn't do anything. It does something that just actually wastes your turn. Spotlight is a normal type status move that makes the target become the center of attention, like follow me. However, this attention focus only applies to the target's foes meaning the user's side of the field. The point of follow me is to protect one of your Pokemon. You make one of them the center of attention, so when your enemy tries to attack your other Pokemon, it hits the center of attention instead. But with Spotlight, you make one of the enemy Pokemon center of attention, and then your attack from your other Pokemon goes toward it and hits it. Why not just target it in the first place? The actual reason anyone would use it is because it overrides other forms of redirection, like follow me or the abilities lightning rod or storm drain or ally switch. But if none of those things are happening on the opponent's side of the field, then spotlight is actually completely useless, meaning it's completely useless 99% of the time. 
Now, if Spotlight made it so the target's allies' attacks then hit the Spotlight Pokemon, different story. But uh, they didn't do that, probably because that would be too good. Game Freak clearly figured out that Spotlight was bad pretty quickly, since it was introduced in Gen 7, then promptly eliminated from the game in Gen 8. Tack on the fact that very few Pokemon learn it, and I'd be stunned if any of you have heard of this move. Next is Steamroller. This bug type physical attack was introduced in Generation 5, and it has 65 base power with a 30% chance to flinch. A fun added quirk in Gen 6 and 7 is that if the target has used Minimize, Steamroller always hits. To me, the move seems decent, like a good mid playthrough move when your Pokemon are in their level 20s and maybe 30s, but I had never encountered it before because almost no Pokemon learn it. The Golems and Guzzlord learn it, but they have to remember it, which effectively makes it a signature move for the Scolipede line. However, they learn it too late. Scolipede learns it at level 39, and by that time, you've probably gotten the X Scissor TM, which is stronger. And then, like many moves on this list, it was removed starting in Gen 8. It's not as bad of a move by any means as other ones we've discussed, but it's not a good enough move for how hard it is to access. Next is Take Heart, which is in a very similar situation to Lunar Blessing. It is a brand new move introduced in Legends Arceus as a signature move for a post-game legendary Pokemon. Two of them, technically. In Legends Arceus, this psychic type move cures the user of status conditions and boosts its offense and defense stats for four turns. Only Fionn and Manaphy can learn it, which cannot be transferred to Scarlet and Violet, so we do not know how its functionality would differ in the traditional battle system. Not much else to say. Most people, if they caught Fionn and Manaphy, they did so just for the decks. So you're probably like me. Manaphy used the move when you were battling it, but then you caught it and forgot about it. Next is Tidy Up, and this move surprised me because I saw it on the list and I was like, oh, I haven't heard of that. What does it do? Who learns it? And I come to find out that it's the signature move of Mouse Hold, which already got another signature move. Like I'm sure many of you, I thought Mouse Hold's only signature move was Population Bomb, an extremely powerful move that caused it to get a lot of usage in VGC. But it also gets a move called Tidy Up? This normal type status move raises the user's attack and speed, plus clears away entry hazards and substitutes on both sides of the field. Mouse Hold only learns it from the move reminder since it's a level one move. It doesn't seem like a bad move, especially in the singles metagame like Smogon, but since I've never used Mouse Hold, and when I saw people using Mouse Hold, they were just spamming Population Bomb, I'd never encountered it. And finally for this video is Toxic Thread. This is another move featured in my previous video that is still super hard to encounter. This poison type status move poisons the target, then lowers its speed by one stage. The reason this move is so obscure is because it's the signature move of Spinarak and Ariados, but didn't exist until Gen 7. While Spinarak and Ariados are in the Alola Pokedex, they don't learn the move until the very high levels of 54 and 63. Considering how not strong they are, it's unlikely for anyone to raise one of these Pokemon to that level. Add on that Spinarak and Ariados are not in Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet, and that means the only games where you can possibly encounter this move are the Alola games and BDSP. Although it can be called by Metronome in Scarlet and Violet, so maybe that means we're getting Spinarak and Ariados in the DLC? That wraps it up for Pokemon moves that you probably haven't heard of. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. But that is all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all!